So let's continue on with our study of linear regression. And now we're at the point where we have to actually figure out, well, what is the equation of that straight line? What is the linear relationship? So we can see here for our death rate versus alcohol example that, you know, we could have drawn all sorts of different lines because, you know, I'm different from you, you're different from somebody else. So we might have a different way of eyeballing, so to speak, which, um, which is the best line. Now, we, what we want to do is to summarize the data overall with a linear form of a line, but we want what we call the best fit line. Now, this is also called the regression line, and we also have some other names for it. Regression line, linear regression line, best fit line, linear equation, and really the most statistically appropriate one, or more statistically accurate one, is the least squares regression line. So let's take a look at what we're going to do. So our regression line is describing how the y variable changes with the x variable. So how does the response change with the explanatory variable? And the ultimate of this is that we want to be able to use that equation to then predict a value of y for a particularly given x. So this is a result from Minitab software. It's a fitted line plot analysis. We have the equation death rate by heart disease is 260.6 minus the 2297 wine consumption. So if we asked ourselves the question, what would be the death rate due to heart disease if the alcohol, alcohol consumption was three liters? Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can just read it off the graph. So I can come down to three here for the wine consumption, go up to my blue line, which is the best fit line, and then extrapolate over to the side and I get just under 200,000 deaths. Alternatively, what we can do is do an exact method, meaning that we're using the equation. So we take our value of interest, three liters, and we plug it into our equation. So 260.6 minus the 2297 times three, and we get exactly 191.66 deaths per 100,000 people. Now just to recap a few things on our graph, the red dots here, that's our Y data, our Y and X values. What's on the blue line is our best fit line. That's our predicted Y values for a given X. Up here we have the equation or the best fit equation. Note it does have the variable names. Okay, so we have the response variable name and the explanatory variable name. It's not good practice in statistics to use X and Y because the first question people will ask you is, well, what's X and what's Y? We then have the slope of the equation, 2297, and also the intercept of the equation, 260.66. So let's take a look at interpreting the slope. So the slope says negative 2297. So how do we interpret that? So our slope, negative 2297, means that for every increase in one liter of wine consumption, the death rate due to heart disease goes down, because it's negative, by 22.97. Let's do the same thing for the intercept. Now for the intercept, we have 260.6. And what that means is that when the wine consumption is zero liters, so nobody, so somebody is not drinking any wine at all, there is still a death rate due to heart disease, and it's 260.6 deaths per 100,000 people. Uh, now, please just uh, note here, I've made a mistake here. The B0 is supposed to be the intercept, and the B1 is supposed to be the slope. Sorry about that. We have the correlation coefficient, and we had seen this in a previous slide. It came out to negative 843, and that correlates with our form, linear, yes, direction, negative, going down towards the right, and 843, negative 843, quite close to negative 1, meaning that the values are quite close together, so this is a linear, negative, strong relationship. We then have another value that we're going to measure, and we'll get into this in a little bit more detail in a little bit. It's called the coefficient of determination, or the squared correlation. Now, the symbol is capital R squared. It's just our little r all squared. We square that value, and then we change it to a percent. And as I said, we're going to get into the meaning of what this tells us later on in the slides. So we have to come back to how do we determine our regression line? So we have a couple of things that we have to notice about our scatter plot with the regression line on it. 
we notice that our raw data is not always on the line because the blue line is our predicted line. So there's going to be differences between what was observed and what was predicted. Between what was observed and what was predicted. Now we call these vertical distance a couple of different things, um, but we want them to be as small as possible. So these little vertical distances, we call them errors or we call them maybe deviations. And remember when we saw the normal model and the deviation from the mean, our z-score is how far away from the mean it was. So for us, again remember, predicted is the y-hat symbol and it means those values that are generated by the equation. And notice how some of our raw data might be very close or indeed right on the line. And our y value means it's the raw data, our actual observed values. Now, as I said, these vertical distances are called errors or residuals is a better term for it. And we have the symbol E for error is equal to the observed minus the predicted value. So the error is the y minus the y hat. And hopefully you'll notice that when we have our y minus y hat, well y is higher in this case than y hat, so that'll be a positive error. In the case of this one here, y minus y hat, well this is a smaller number, take away a bigger number, that's going to be a negative residual. If we take a look at a chart of this data, so there's the country, there's our X value, wine consumption in liters. There's our Y value, the death rate due to heart disease. And here's our predicted Y value. Now these two values at the bottom here, this is the X bar and this is the Y bar, but we don't need them right now. So we can see here that we have an error value. Remember error is the difference between Y minus Y bar. So 211 minus 20314 is 7.86. 167 minus 170.98 is negative 398. Now you'll notice that these errors, some are positive, some are negative, but notice the sum of them. The sum of the errors comes to zero. Now we've seen this before in statistics where statisticians don't like things that have positives and negatives, so what do they do to get around that? Well, they square them. So here's the errors squared, and notice how they're all positive values. So we calculate the vertical distance, the errors are residuals, we get the squares of them, and then the method is called least squares regression, meaning that the sum of all these squares, there's an algorithm that is done that is used by our calculator or Excel or whatever software we might be using, that aims to get this sum, this sum of least squares, to be the smallest number possible. And that's where the name comes from. Going through some notation again, we have our predicted value is our intercept B0 plus B1, the slope times X. B1, we have alternate ways of calculating it, our, co our correlation coefficient multiplied by the standard deviation of Y over the standard deviation of X. And we could also calculate our intercept by finding the Y bar value and subtracting B1, the slope, times the X bar value. So remember the equation here, y with this little thing on top is called y hat. B1 is our slope, so it's the rate of change in y as x increases. And B0 is the y-intercept, it's the value of y when x is zero. Now for our purposes, we don't have to know how to use these two bottom formulas. Uh, we will be getting these different values, the intercept and the slope right off our calculator or Excel. Something we have to be aware of is there's a bridge between statistics, math, and the calculators. In stats, we have the symbol y hat is equal to b naught intercept plus b1 slope times x. And we can see different ways of calculating the slope and the intercept just like we saw before. In math, you might be more familiar with the format of a straight line, y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line or rise over run and b is the y-intercept, meaning what is the value of y when x is zero. And then calculators, they also use different terminology or different notation. y is equal to a plus bx, and this time b is the slope of the line, and a is the y-intercept. This is only introduced to show you that, you know, calculator manufacturers use one notation, our math textbooks from years gone by use a different notation, and then statistics keeps this <clears throat> excuse me, B naught 
notation. Now why statistics does this is because we're looking at simple linear regression right now where we have one explanatory variable but if you do further statistics you'll be doing multiple regression well you'll have multiple explanatory variables and then you'll have b1 as the slope for your first variable, variable b2 as the slope for the second etc. And for us, we can use our calculator or Excel to find these different values a little more easily than using these formulas. Now I have an example here. Um, I'm going to create a separate video in Excel looking at this data and answering these different questions. If you want to try it on your calculator, here's our instructions for, for our Texas BA2 Plus calculator for entering data getting the equation of the line and the correlation coefficient, and then doing a prediction for y given x. And if you happen to have a different calculator, the SHARP 516, there's the instructions for that one. Here's the results in shown in mini tab for our grocery cost per person. Again, notice we have an R, and we, again, we can use little r or big R, is negative 868. Negative, strong relationship, form linear. The fitted line is grocery cost per person. Notice the variable name is 8864 minus 4089, the number in the family. 